How's it going everyone? This is Fine Gaming Connoisseur, and welcome back to this Let's Play of Mortal Online, Season 4. Okay, so this is the 1.87.00.00. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the latest version as of um, January 23rd, 24th I should say. And so this is the Elementalism patch that uh, the SV has deployed. And so now, before I go any further, I just want to mention that I posted two links in the description below. And so one of them is the, because one of my viewers was asking whether there's any, uh, any way I could show the new elementalism spells. And so I've included a link in the descri description below. It takes you to the forum thread uh, posted by this forum member, Aged, I, can't, I really don't know how to pronounce his name properly. Um, it's Aged uh, underscore Drem. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce his name. And these two people are dueling, I think. So, okay, so if you want to see how the elementalism spells are and, you know, the pictures and animated GIFs, then you can go to that, um, go to that forum thread. And the other one is a post made by Henrik Nystrom, the CEO of SV. He posted an update about the progress of territory control revamp. I think, um, you know, he's, there is a rework going on in behind the scenes. And um, so he did post a thread, not a thread, but a, um, a post about it. So if you want to go, if you are curious about what SV has in store for TC, then uh, do feel free to check out that link. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this is the, so this is a video again for new players. And so today's video is going to be about going out of town. My previous video for the, or, or my latest previous video was um, beyond the new player tutorial. So logically, I figured that um, you know the next step that new players will want to find out it would be going out of town and <laughs> man, I'm, I'm just <laughs> enjoying this enjoying these two guys duking it out <laughs> okay I think I finished all right so so the next logical step I think for new players would be to go out of town and that in itself is a whole different challenge and uh and so i will go out because i do have several things i need to do and i do i need to do a bit of hunting so i figured that i will you know cover traveling going out of town along you know as a you know, kill two birds with one stone okay so first things first um you know when you go out I think the most important thing is, okay, before I take my stuff, before I go out, I just want to mention two things. So one thing is, um, you know, you need to be prepared. Um, the thing in this game, when you go out traveling is that if you're not prepared, then you are, you are doing yourself a disservice. You are at a disadvantage if you're not prepared. So let's say you're a, you know, you're a fighter and you know, you don't have, you're not wearing your armor, you're not wearing, you're not equipping your, you know, the best sword, that the best weapon that you have that you, that you can easily replace, then you are not prepared. And so the, the most important thing is that you need to be prepared. Now that doesn't mean that you need to, you know, be fully armored or anything like that. It's, it just means whatever, you know, whatever it is that you do to be prepared whether that means um you know taking your reagents your food your torch your shovels uh, campfires and all that sort of thing those things are <laughs> dummy donk uh, those things are important because if you go out without your uh, essential tools then when you come across something when you come across a situation that requires a certain tool or a you know reagent or you know like a bandage or something like that then, then you are at a disadvantage and you will fare, you will fare much worse than if you had all those things with you. So it's important before you go out that you have all the necessary, 
all the necessary um, syndrome commoner. Yeah, all the necessary tools and equipment, supplies, and whatever else you may need to take with you. Okay, so that's one thing. And the other thing is what I would call uh, situational awareness or just the common steps that anyone would take when they cross the road or when they're going to go out and drive. You know, um, since this is the first first person only game, you know, you do, you do need to be situationally aware and that means when you go out, scan your surroundings and make sure that there isn't um, you know, someone outside that might look like a could be potentially a killer, a murderer. However, you know, just doing that is not going to pre prevent is not going to prevent um, you from getting killed further out when you go when you go further out into the into the wilderness. Because um, what people can do is that they can hide, they can conceal themselves in a distance, and um, and I believe they can see people when they're just coming out of the gates and they can be hidden. See, I can see that player, that person that's rode out. So he, if he's, let's, let's say that person is standing still and he's standing behind a tree or next to the tree and he's just looking up over here. You probably wouldn't even know that there was a person there until you walked all the way out and then you, and then that person comes uh, charging towards you with a you know with a big giant axe or a you know like a bow um, then that would be a little bit too late and that you know sometimes that is a danger that you can't avoid entirely so you know that is a risk that you do take when you go out this is a free-for-all pvp at anywhere anytime and even though right now there doesn't seem to be anyone but uh, the moment you walk out over to that hill there could be uh, one or more uh, people out there who could be potentially uh, murderers or people out to get you. Um, so that's so that is one thing to, to be aware of. And and I did see a thread some time ago about this person who was complaining that um, they or someone else was getting killed um, when they go out, and there was a huge um, <laughs> a huge um, flaming. You know, discussion. Uh, people were venting, and people were just, you know, calling, saying that, you know, um, you know, this is a full, this is a hardcore, you know, uh, free for all PvP game. You should have expected that, and etc. etc. And in a way, they are right in that because um, that's the risk that you take. And you know, I have died um, just going out, and you know, I've walked this, uh, I've walked out of Tindrum Gates many many times over the course of four years or four and a half years i should say i think and um and i have died several times but you know each time that i died i learned some lesson from it so um so one advice i would give to new players who are um, worried that they will get killed or they have been killed is that don't don't see dying as a um as a bad thing as such a bad thing it is a bad thing in that you lose all your stuff and you you know you die and you have to resurrect and you know all the penalties that go with it uh, you have to rest up and you do lose reserves and <clears throat> all that kind of thing but but at the same time you do you do learn valuable lessons and and for me that was how I learned how to how to um, you know leave town and come in uh, as safely as I can uh, without running such a great risk of getting killed and, and I, over over the years I have learned how to leave town and how to you know come into town in a in the best way possible uh, for me for myself and the thing about this game is that there is not one correct way to play the game everyone has their own way of playing it um, so it's up to you to figure out what is your best the optimal way for you to uh, ensure your own safety I'm just giving you my own perspective and so you may or may not um, copy what I do but the most important thing is you figure out how it is how you're going to go about surviving in this world and if you can figure that out then you will have mastered what I'm trying to present present to you in this video 
Okay, so now that I've covered those two things, I'm gonna go out. And one thing I, I should mention to you as well, is that when you're gonna go out, you know, don't announce, oh, look at this guy's armor. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that's just for, I don't know, is this a new player? <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of this um, player that I met a long time ago. Um, I went hunting with, um, I think that video was um, admirable traits, uncommon admirable traits that was in season two or three or something like that. So yeah, that player does remind me of um, that video and, and this guy's got two swords hello <laughs> it's too wielding so anyway um one thing that i should mention is that before if you're going to go out don't make a big announcement don't you know do a yell or you know don't tell people on the on the um help chat and don't definitely don't broadcast it in local or any anywhere else that um that you don't want people to hear because in this game People have come up with unofficial professions, like I mentioned in the previous video. And so these unofficial professions, like, like this player here, Dum Dumby Donk. Now, this player here might just be someone who just resurrected, might be a new player, you know, who's just still figuring out how to play the game. Or this person could be a spotter. This person could be someone who's standing still and just paying attention to what is going on. Uh, who is leaving who is coming in and so if they if they're spotting if they're acting as a spotter for someone else someone a bigger group outside then you know when they see you go out then they can tell their friends that so and so so and so is um is going out and then they and then the bigger group out there can come come across and come and get you and the spotter can follow you if they choose to so just be aware that if you're going to go out, don't announce to everyone and be careful who you trust. In this game, there's a lot of, um, yeah, um, only tell people um, where you're going if you if they're going out with you, if they're, if they're your guild mates or if they're your friends that you trust, that you know you can trust. And so definitely don't tell people where you're going and where you are. Um, and don't let people trick you because if you if you're a new player and you go on the help chat and you know you're somewhere out in the wild and, and you're saying oh how can I do this or where can I get this or whatever um, just be careful you know don't let people trick you into handing out um, you know your location information about your location so if they say say something like oh so where are you and you know where where are you so I can come and help you just be careful of that. You know, um, if it's someone that you don't know or someone that you don't really trust, then don't tell don't tell that person, and definitely don't tell people on the help chat because there could be someone who's listening in, someone that you don't know who is on the help chat. Okay, that was uh, I just had a phone call, so I had to <laughs> I had to stop recording and and resume. Um, so, okay, as I was saying, um, so don't let people trick you uh, into giving out your location because because then that would give um, you know allow people to come and you know look for you and gank you okay so just be aware of that and um, as with my previous video about you know uh, you know what a new play can do beyond the new play tutorial um, this video is not meant to cover every single aspect of um, going out and traveling there is a lot and I think um, you know I think as you play the game, you will learn. And like I mentioned, uh, you know, you do need to learn and think for yourself in this game. You know, don't expect people to tell you um, everything because uh, that is not the spirit of this game. This, this the game is, um, you know, is designed so that you will uh, you will learn through your mistakes and you will learn as you play. And and that is one of the things why I love this game is because um, there's just you know, as you play the game, you will learn how to play it your way. And that is the beauty of this game. You play it your way. You don't, you don't need to follow a, a set path or, you know, like a, um, like a, you don't get railroaded down a certain direction, but 
you know, you do whatever you want and you play it however you wish and that is part of the beauty of this game. Okay, so I'm going to go out now. Uh, I'm going to take my mount and I'm going to go traveling. I don't need silver, do I? <laughs> and so, okay, so what do I need? I need blinders. Uh, where do my blinders go? I think I lost my blinders, didn't I? <laughs> so I will need to... Um, Okay, so I will need to go to the slums. So just bear with me. And on the way, I will just talk a little bit about... <laughs> Man. <laughs> People using using uh, stray dogs as, um, I don't know, target practice or something. Okay, I think I have my horse equipment in the slums bank. So I'm, I'm going to go and do a bit of hunting just in the hills outside of Tindrum. And, uh, and there are other things that you should pay attention and I will, and I will mention them. So I guess, I guess maybe now is a good time for me to mention one thing is that when you're going out, uh, you will see bushes like this. And so these bushes, um, they're not just, uh, you know, in game, uh, environmental decorations this is actually a place where you can hide so so if you see bushes like this and you you think that you might be in danger or there might be some you know like a group of reds that are roaming about and you're not comfortable being seen then you can go into these bushes now one thing i, I would uh recommend is that you walk into the bushes like so you press your walk key and then you walk into the bushes and the reason why I say that is because if you run into the bushes it will cause the bush to sway just now as you saw I walked into into the bush and the screen didn't show any uh, of the leaves swaying and that is because I walked into it uh, whereas if you run into it like so you see the leaves are swaying, uh, are swaying so when people are looking in from the outside they can see the bush basically um okay, i'm going to try and demonstrate it yeah so you can see the bush basically you know swaying you know fairly visible so if they can see a bush swaying and even if they don't see you they see the bush swaying then they they can see that uh someone has has uh you know gone in there to hide so but if you walk into the bush, then it won't sway so much. So best to walk into the bush. And that is one, that is one thing that I learned <laughs> as a result of playing this game. So <laughs> as you can, so now you can see why I say that, you know, a lot of things you will learn just by playing this game. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so thankfully we're in, we're in, uh, you know, in the middle of town where there are guards, but I so I say, uh, you know, you're in the wild and there are no guards. Then where those, those two players go? <laughs> they go and hide as well. If they saw you um, outside of the bush, then they can very well just come and kill you if they want, or you know, demand that you drop all your items and. There is a drop loot here, so they can demand that you drop all your items or they will kill you. So, <laughs> and that's basically um, highway robbery or brigandry. Basically, well, not brigandry, brigandry would be uh, theft, robbery by force. So, highway robbery would be, yeah, I think it would be, you know, demanding that you drop everything or else they will kill you, <laughs> kill your character. So, yeah, just be aware of that. You know, I was going to demonstrate that bush thing when I was outside, but since since I'm going to the slums, I might as well demonstrate it <laughs> so that I don't have to demonstrate it when I'm out where there's um, no guards and there's danger everywhere. Now, there is danger everywhere, inside, in, even inside towns as well. Um, and that brings me to another thing that I think I will mention to you. What the... Why has he got two heads and two... 
Anyway, none of my business. That's one of my policies, one of my rules anyway. I won't take anything unless it involves me. Okay. So I'll just grab my... Where are my horse equipment, huh? I thought they were here. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> maybe... Okay, so maybe they are in... Maybe they are in another bank. It could be in the arena bank. So this might be a good way for me to show you where the arena bank is. If you don't know this already, if you're watching this for the first time. There is three separate banks, like I mentioned in my previous um, new player progression guide video. So Tindrum being the very big city that it is, it has three separate banks. Most towns have just one or two at the most, but Tindrum has three. So normally I use the Tindrum Central Plaza bank as my main bank, and then the Tindrum Slums and the Tindrum Arena Bank, I use it to store my surplus items. Use it as my armory <laughs> of sorts. Um, so the other thing I was going to mention is that uh, in town, you are not safe either. Um, and I say this because I was uh, out cutting wood the other day with my resource gatherer. Um, and so I had my mount standing next to me. And so I was cutting wood. I'll show you where I was cutting the wood. And I'll tell you, and I'm going to show you something that you might find useful so that you can avoid being attacked like I was. So I was attacked all of a sudden. I was just cutting wood, quietly minding my own business. And all of a sudden, my horse started to take damage. And the first, first instinct, the first reaction I had was to get on my horse and ride away. And so that is one thing, if you are a non-combat character, if you're a resource gatherer, you're a crafter or something along those lines, you don't have, you can't, you know, defend yourself properly, then you might, and you might want to just get on your mount and ride away as quickly as you can. So like this player here, I was cutting, I think I was cutting here or something, I think I was cutting from this tree or Actually, it was this tree. Yeah, I was cutting from this tree. And so my mount was standing around about here and I was cutting wood about here. Actually, I think my mount was standing here. I can't remember exactly, but this was a few days ago. And so while I'm at it, I might actually just defend, you know, provide this player with some protection. Okay, so uh, a group of two mounted reds or well, one was blue and the other one was red. Uh, started to fire arrows at my mount here. And so they, I think they shot about two or three arrows at it before I got on my mount and rode away. And so my mount was, um, I was fortunate to have gotten away because if they fired one more arrow, then my horse would have um, been taken, taken out. Um, but I did manage to ride away. I rode, I rode towards the guards and then the guards started to pursue. However, the guards only have a certain radius. <laughs> Maybe he got, got a bit paranoid. Hopefully not, but yeah, I think this game can make people paranoid. So the guards pursued, but they only pursued them up to a certain point and then they would just disengage. And so the red player got away. However, he did come back and I did try to see whether the guards would take him out, but um, I think they didn't. So in this game, even when there are guards, you know, don't assume that they can provide you with um, complete safety because that is not, that is not um, their function. Uh, their function in this game is, is punitive rather than preventative. And what I mean by that is that they can punish the, uh, the criminal once the crime has taken place after the fact, but they, they cannot prevent the crime from being carried out. So, and if a player knows what he's doing and they, they're they um, sufficiently armored and they have the means to get away, then uh, they can get away after killing you. And uh, so just be aware of that. Um, even in Tindrum, 
even in a guarded town, there is no assurance of safety. There is only relative safety, not absolute safety. And so, yeah. So just be aware of that. If you're gonna, if you're gonna cut wood from here, like from places where the guards are limited, where there are not that many guards, then my advice is that you should face, have your back facing the guards and face the direction where it's the least guarded. So like I'm doing here, if you're gonna cut this tree here, then cut it facing like this or like this. And the reason why I say that is because if a player, if a red player were to come along and they start, you know, and they start coming at you or they, they stand still when they, and you see them draw their bow aiming at you, then you can, then before they fire, fire the arrows, then you can get away rather than, let's say if you're, rather than, let's say if you're facing this way and you're not, and you don't see them, then they can get in several hits and they could potentially kill you even before the guards can, you know, respond, they can kill you. Um, there are weapons that can take out a an unarmored player relatively quickly, and and so if there are no guards here, then um, I, I reckon the person who killed you can just come along and grab your loot quickly and then get away. So you don't want that to happen. You want to at least be able to get away if you're not a player who can defend themselves then you can run away towards the guards and the guards can respond can take care take care of the uh, aggressor alternatively you might want to uh, get someone to hire you know maybe get someone to act as a bodyguard and bodyguards are important even in town because I have seen people act as bodyguards for butchers for crafters for woodcutters for miners in town because crimes do happen and uh, you know PvP can take place especially if a group of uh, killers want to take you out then they can do that they can kill you well before the guards can even properly respond and take out the aggressors uh, I do remember one time and I did see this video um, a group of RPK players they did come in I think they sneaked through the sunken district and they managed to come through to this area through this um, through this little alleyway where there are no guards and but they all lined up they all you know formed a single file formation and then on the set go they all rushed into the Tindrum bank into this bank area and they just killed pretty much anyone they can find and and I remember seeing them killing I think it's three or four players or something like that before the guards took them out and even when the guards were you know attacking them they were still killing the new players attacking people in here and I think they managed to kill I think one or two before the guards took them all out so, so you know that is why I say um, if you're going to you know if, if you're in, in Tindrum just be aware that you know safety not, is not uh, a sure thing there is only relative safety, not absolute safety. Okay, so so I do need to get a blinder for my mount, and uh, and yes, I think I have covered quite a bit inside the city, which is good because if I go out, then uh, I might not be able to talk so much, um, talk so readily, because you know I'd be focusing on my attention on uh, doing what I need to do to stay safe, <laughs> to protect myself, conceal myself. So it's good that I managed to cover all these things. And these were the things I was going to cover in this video. So um, <laughs> thankfully I was made, I was able to cover them in this video in while I was in the relative safety of town where there are heavy concentrations of guards. Okay. So I'll take this and I'll take this. And yes, I do need to bring some, bring some bandages and some reagents. Uh, 
And what do I need? I need um, so yeah, like I said, you know, bring. Make sure that you're prepared. Make sure that you come. You have all the things that you need before you go out. Yeah, I think that's all I need. And the other thing is as well, and this is probably a good thing to mention as well. Um, when you're um, preparing to go out, when you're you know, sorting out the things that you're going to take out, um, sort them out, but place them in the in an empty slot in the bank like I did. So let's say you're going to take bandages and reagents, then put them all in an empty slot before you put them in your inventory. Because if you separate a stack of, let's say, bandages, and you put it straight away into your into your inventory, then while you're sorting out the next item, there is a chance that someone can come up behind you and snoop into your pocket and take it out. So, and like I mentioned in my previous video, you want to make it as hard for the thieves as possible. Yes, I do have <laughs> some equipment here, but because I'm back to a wall, I can see who's going to come in and sneak up behind me and who's not. And so just, you know, that's probably one thing that you might want to consider is that sort out all your, all the things that you're going to take out uh, and put them in your bank first before um, taking them all out at once like I'm doing now. See, that way you don't have to take that risk of having your reagents or whatever it is that you're taking out stolen. <laughs> so as you can see, all these things I've learned and these, these are things that I learned on my own. I didn't um, learn it from anyone else. I learned it on my own as a, as a result of playing the game. So, yeah, th this game does teach you to learn and think for yourself. <laughs> Take out a pet and... Oh, okay, so, I, so this is my, yeah. Let's take out my desert horse. All right, so... And yes, you, I think you do need to... Uh, yes, that is the right icon. So it's a good idea to put, you know, the icons that you use the most on your hotbars because that way it, does, it saves you from having to, saves you from having to, um, you know, press all these other keys and and so one thing I should mention is that different pets have different stats and and that could affect their performance their speed, their um, their ability to carry items. So, as an example, my Lakaitor, for some reason, isn't able to carry you know heavy items, and and I'm guessing that is due to the fact that it is built for speed than anything else. Whereas my horses, they can carry you know carcasses and heavy items. Okay, so live demonstration. <laughs> and always keep an eye on what's behind you. Have a 360 degrees situational awareness. So don't rush out. And be prepared to run back to the gates if you have to. If you suddenly see that there are murderers about, and there could be. So. And that's why through for all PvP and full looting is so important in this game because it really does, every time you go out, it's a different, you know, it forces you to never be complacent at any time, anywhere, because you know that someone can just come up and then, you know, attack you and kill you. And as you saw just now, I was riding diagonally because I want to keep my speed up as much as possible at all times rather than going straight uphill because if you go straight uphill, you'll notice that your mount slows down. Whereas if you ride diagonally, and I'm sure you know all the PVPers know this, mounted PVPers, if you do this, then you can maintain a steady speed at least much faster than you going straight uphill. At least by doing this, you can... 
yeah so that's that's one thing that you can do now there is three speed uh, three speed um, modes and so one of them is you know when you press forward your for your horse will begin a, a trotting speed and that is the slowest the second speed would be a general you know, a general speed which is the medium speed and then the third one is the the speed that will begin to you know is probably is, it is the fastest speed they can maintain I think and if you keep pressing your forward speed then you can um, sacrifice stamina for extra bursts of speed so if let's say if you need to get away like I did several times in the past then you can make sure that every, <laughs> make sure it's safe here um, then you can you know use that to get away so keep tapping the forward key which is W by default then you can maintain you can sacrifice stamina for extra bursts of speed all right so now the next thing I want to show you is concealing use uh, using shadows and objects to conceal your location so okay so now my horse is standing stay okay so you know if the sun is here then you don't want to park your mount you know where where the sun is going to shine on it you know try and use the shadows to conceal your location or the location of your pet okay <laughs> relatively easy okay so that is not the best location but it is much better than you parking it out right in the sun where people can see it readily so here you see the benefit of using a mount to carry your to carry your things now I'm primarily a um, I'm not much of a pvp -er, <laughs> even though I played this game for so long but I'm not uh, you know, I'm not a PvPer. I'm not much of a PvPer, <laughs> although I have survived PvP encounters against incredible odds. You know, two mounted reds going at me at the same time. I have survived, and I have survived um, two Alvarian, you know, very fast, nimble characters, and also a having a um, having a scoundrel attacking me at the same time. So I have survived, you know, sort of, you know, reasonably hard situations like that. Um, yeah, but generally speaking, I'm not much. I'm not much of a PvP. -er. <laughs> so most of the time, I try to avoid um, confrontations. I try to avo avoid encounters as much uh, as much as possible, um, and I only fight in self-defense if I have no other recourse if I'm forced to fight then you know I will fight okay so now I need to hunt some yeah I just hope I'm not uh... yeah I did mention in a number of videos uh, you know houses and keeps and castles exist in the same space as the game world space so if so if someone's inside, inside their keep or their house or whatever, and they can, and they see you, uh, they can, you know, if they decide that they're going to come out and get you, then they can. So <laughs> there's no such thing as, um, you know, separate zones or instances for houses. So. Another tip that I would give to new players is um, try to conserve your horse's stamina and that is an advice that my friend Crew gave me a long time ago. He said, you know, if you're out in the wild then conserve your stamina whether it be on foot or um, on a mount because if you, if a red player comes along you'll need the stamina for your horse to get away. 
because the the other player will be doing the same thing. They will have reserved their stamina to chase you down. Is that a player? Not snatch, okay. So stay. Okay. Okay, my hands are a little bit, little bit bugged, I think. Huh? Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> Out of range, I think. Yeah, it is a little bit tricky. Bandage. I wish SV would just, you know, recode the uh, hot bars a little bit so that I don't have to keep putting. putting my bandages and other things on the. Um, I just need another one. That should be good. Yeah, the texture's a little bit bugged for some reason. Yeah, this one's going to be a weak one, I think. Huh? Why isn't blocking... Why isn't pairing working? Okay, I think that should be enough. And while I'm at it, <laughs> I'm gonna try and pick some some of this war chunks to hand over to my to my uh, refiner. My heart, my heart's really pumping right now. <laughs> Because I'm on foot and I'm really vulnerable. See, when you're vulnerable, like I am, <laughs> that's where the um, that's where the tension really gets to you. Because you don't know when a red player is going to come along and they see you and they and they'll start attacking you. <laughs> it has happened to me before, and. Uh, Well, one thing I just thought of this: um, if you have to bring a horse, maybe what you can do is park your park your horse with the you know in the in the midst of the uh, other horses. That way, you know, um, I think you know it would sort of draw less attention to them. You know, the um, what is that? Is that a? No, I'm not going to find out. <laughs> I have too much to too much to lose at this point. So how much do I get? Okay, I have um, roughly one quarter. So it should be enough um, ground for because yeah, I do hunt the the night snatch for their ground fur as part of my crafting. All right. So I hope that uh, you've learned quite a bit <laughs> from if you're new and if you're um, you know if you if you're just learning the game. I hope that this video has helped you. And I guess. Uh, at this point, I'll just mention that uh, if you're riding, 
if you're out in the wild, then whether you're on, on mounts or on, uh, on foot, whether you're on mounts or on foot, uh, one good way to, you know, at least deter would be killers is to ride along the coastline, like very close to the edge. Because mounts um, have a, you know, the way they work is that they need to turn, you know, like this. It's not, you know, they can't just turn like um, moving characters can. You know, characters can turn on a dime, but mounts cannot. You know, they do, you know, take a, you know, they, <laughs> so as you can see, you can't just turn on a dime, like, like if you're on foot. So if you're out in the wild, then you can ride along the coastline and that might deter some players from trying to attack you because if they're not careful, they can fall off the edge and that'll be the end of them. <laughs> and so, so yeah, I have mentioned that in a number of my videos, but I thought, you know, since I'm doing this traveling video, then you know, I try and fit as much as I can, as much tips and advice as I can. And one thing I will mention is that the most dangerous time for you as a traveling person, as a traveler, is when you're going out of the out of town and coming in. Because I think that's where a lot of players, a lot of killers are going to be roaming about. Because they know that, you know, if players are going to come into town or go out, they have to have to go through a certain there's a, there's a certain entrance where they have to take. And so I think that's where they, you know, <laughs> build their strategy around you know, ambush and, um, you know, that sort of thing. All right, so we've made it. <laughs> so thankfully for that. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, managed to cover quite a bit. Now there is a lot more that I could go on covering, but I think I'm not going to keep this video going on for too long, but I think I've covered quite a bit. So at this point I'm just going to, and yes they can kill your horse in here. <laughs> um, there was a time, there was a point in time when there was a, uh, let me just put everything down first. There was there was a point in time um, when horses were being killed inside the bank because this player decided that they're going to oh okay <laughs> yeah, just dump it all in here for now I won't bother where it, where it goes I'll sort it out later. So there was a point in time where this player decided that he's going to, I think, get a group of his friends and start killing any mounts that, that are in the bank because you know, he says it's you know the bank is for banking, not for it's, it's not a stable, it's not for it's not for mounts or pets. So he <laughs> he went out of his way to kill all the mounts that are in the bank and um, and so yes. People can kill your mount inside the bank as well. Save your pet. Huh? Yes. Huh? So what? Oh, okay. But I thought... Yeah, anyway, <laughs> there's a lag in this game, so... Sometimes things are not what they appear. <laughs> I saw my large bag in the bank in the bank just now, but for some reason it wasn't... Okay. Okay, so that's successful uh, <laughs> trip out into the wild, even if it's just a simple hunting trip, but with a game like this, with all the mechanics that it has, every trip that you take going out, no matter what you're doing, is going to get your heart racing. Guaranteed. <laughs> Alright, so hope that you found this video useful and hope that you... Um, yeah, hope that you've learned um, 
some a few things from from this video um, so I hope that uh, I will be able to yeah I, I will continue to if I think of other things I will try to cover cover it in the in the game guide uh, player progression game guide video series which I started quite a number of years ago <laughs> uh, it's only been recently that I started to you know continue doing them but uh, yeah so so if I think of other things I will try and make those videos and put them in here so that you as the new player can uh, you know uh, so that you <laughs> so that you have a you survive you have a better time better time playing this game you know an easier time hopefully um, of playing this game so that you won't have to go through so many harsh experiences like I and many others have had to go through in order to learn the things that we've learned um, so yeah <laughs> so yeah hope that you can please uh, subscribe um, if you are a regular viewer of my channel please do subscribe it would really really help me out um, and you know I am aiming to get a thousand subscribers right now I'm sitting on at the, at the time of this video I have 675 I think it is plus or minus a few so I'm I'm hoping to get to a thousand subscribers so if you are a regular viewer on my channel or if you're new and you are and you enjoyed my video enjoy this video and, and you like my channel please do hit the subscribe button um, I do have the subscribe button on this video so if you see my channel icon which is the which is a picture of my main character typers which <laughs> him wearing the uh you know the golden uh Tindramex scale armor if you see that button just uh, click on that and it will subscribe to my you will, you will subscribe to my channel so uh so thank you for that and um if you like this video please hit the like button and if you have any comments uh, please leave it in the section below and uh, if you can please share this video as well uh, thank you for watching and i hope that i'll see you in the next one this is fine gaming connoisseur and it's getting dark now <laughs> so thank you for watching and uh, take care